we are going to be bringing in various experts who are going to take the court um, verbally through their expert evidence. We are going to be looking at the harms versus the scientific benefits of cannabis and we're going to try and reach a conclusion, a scientific conclusion as has been deprived or, or as has been lacking in, our, in, our, in the way that we uh, make our laws. Look, the, the science of cannabis is extensive and as I've said, it's growing by the day. But to simplify it, cannabis is a gateway drug that has been proven over and over. Cannabis is addictive. That has also been shown very clearly. Authoritative bodies accept it like that. The WHO have laid down guidelines to diagnose cannabis addiction, certain characteristics. So it is definitely addictive. What we're saying is that if the finding is such that cannabis falls within the acceptable bounds or what we have declared as, as a state to be acceptable in the form of tobacco and alcohol, then you're being irrational and you're being arbitrary in your lawmaking and therefore the prohibitory laws serve to be struck out as unconstitutional and the legislature must then come in and rectify the mistake that is the unconstitutional law. We legalized those things in the days when we didn't have the information. Now we have the science. So let's just do proper research before we legalize it. I mean that you must now go ahead and you must legalize heroin and cocaine and all kinds of things. Uh, it's just not logic. Definitely some advantages in marijuana, but let me make it clear that there doesn't seem to be any future uh, for the medicinal use of the plant as a whole whether you smoke it or whether you eat it or whichever way. Please understand me that Doctors for Life is not against the use of herbs. Um, but if a herb has been shown to be so dangerous, then the use of the whole herb should be restricted. It's not really for the state in a constitutional democracy to tell you what you can and cannot put into your body, especially when you are a terminal person or you are uh, suffering from a terminal disease. Um, and for that matter, what you can put into your body generally, so long as you are not significantly harming yourself or significantly harming others. So, you know, you can't really separate any of these, of these arguments or any of these pushes because, you know, what's medicinal to one person is recreational to another person. Uh, it, it may also be argued quite loosely or I suppose quite convincingly that if it makes you happy, uh, happiness is good for your health. We all know that uh, stress is one of the biggest killers in modern society. So if this is something that de-stresses you, what we're going to say is that it's not really for the state to prohibit you, to criminally prohibit you from doing so. What we're going to say is that you have a right to cognitive liberty such as that the state, once again, has no business telling you where you can and cannot go within the confines of your own mind, so long, of course, that you are not significantly harming another person while you're doing this. So, so it's something that hasn't been tested in our courts, and we're certainly of the opinion that it's something that should be tested through our courts. In Europe, in England, Europe, and Canada, they also have a mixture of, uh, of uh, THC, and cannabidiol in a one-to-one -one ratio, which is safe. It doesn't cause the psychoactive effects. It's, uh, it's available in, in, in these countries, and it can be just easily be made available in South Africa, and we know it's safe. So Doctors for Life suggests that we, that we find out which molecules has the benefit, and that we uh, properly examine its negative effects, and then we can produce it as the Medicines Control Council is actually suggesting now.